Now let's look at Jung's perspective. Now, as I mentioned, it was the publication of Jung's Psychology of the Unconscious in 1912, which highlighted the clear divergence from Freud. And as well, it formed the basic tenets of analytical psychology. So Jung's position with regard to the unconscious mind. So like Freud, Jung also divided the human psyche into three parts, the ego, the personal unconscious, and the collective unconscious. To Jung, the ego is the conscious mind, the personal unconscious includes memories both recalled and suppressed, and the collective unconscious holds our experiences as a species or knowledge that we are innately born with. Um, so Jung's take on the human psyche was inspired by his studies into Eastern philosophies and religions such as Buddhism and Hinduism. And he also believed that the contents of the unconscious are not restricted to repressed material. Now, the way in which Carl Jung envisaged the human psyche is more abstract um, than Freud's iceberg model. And as such, it's a lot more challenging to conceive of metaphorically. So the image here is probably one of the more straightforward interpretations that I could actually find of Jung's. Here, we basically have a series of concentric circles which represent the various realms of the human psyche. And the word psyche itself is taken from Greek mythology and becomes synonymous with the soul. In psychology, it refers to the mind's overarching container of thought, emotion, and behavior, all that is conscious and unconscious. The upper level, which includes the persona and the ego, pertain to the conscious mind. The self is the epicenter of the psyche and operates within the personal unconscious realm. The shadow, the anima, and the animus are all within the collective unconscious mind. Now I have some definitions just to um, further expand on that. So what do I mean by anima? Anima is the feminine influence and in image in men. Animus is the masculine influence and image in women. The shadow is the thing a person has no wish to be, but is. Aspects of ourselves we deny, cannot see or try to hide from other people. Self is the underlying center of the human psyche, which also encompasses the whole psyche. It guides the ego if the latter is able to listen to it. The ego is the center of our conscious mind, which mediates between this and the unconscious. Now, the persona, this is Jung's term for mask at the front of the ego. The mask will vary according to the situation which we're in. Uh, and we will use this uh, consciously or unconsciously to adapt to a certain context. I like to remember the role of the persona with an analogy whereby I imagine, say, if you're attending a formal black tie dinner party, you might adopt a more graceful and dignified air without realizing it. Your manner of speaking might become more eloquent and your posture more regal. On the other hand, if you and your friends are going for a few pints down the local pub, you might well be a bit more boisterous and casual in your manner and your words. Now, it probably goes without saying that each of these terms and concepts are vastly more complex in scope than what I can afford to go into here. For the sake of brevity, I'm merely giving their generic and most basic descriptions. I'll be coming to some book recommendations later in the presentation, which will serve as a good starting place if you're looking to explore in depth precisely uh, what these Jungian concepts mean. Now, perhaps the most salient aspect of how Jung theorized the unconscious mind was his inclusion of what he called the collective unconscious. Now, this concept undoubtedly was the product of the manifold philo philosophical influences that he drew from, including Plato's theory of forms, Immanuel Kant's notion of a priori knowledge, Schopenhauer's philosophy of the will, and even Goethe's seminal novel, Faust might have played a part in helping shape ideas relating to archetypes and the shadow 
with uh, the characters in that book who wrestle with existential problems of good and evil. Jung likened the collective unconscious to a reservoir whereby all stored knowledge and experiences pertaining to the human spe species is drawn from. Another analogy that we could use to describe what he meant by the collective unconscious might be that of a vast computer network or the internet itself. Imagine in this analogy that our minds are but a single node amongst many millions, uh, like a receptor plugged into a web of indescribable complexity and size. Our mind is the receptor which shares and intakes from the infinitesimal sea of psychic data that is stored, transmitted, and uploaded into our consciousness. Now, in order to fully understand the collective unconscious, we have to know what Jung meant by archetypes. And we'll be coming to that in just a moment when we look at Jung's approach to dreams. Jung's proof of the collective unconscious was his concept of synchronicity, which is basically the unexplainable feelings of connectedness that we all share. But he also went to great lengths during his lifetime to substantiate his theories when traveling to remote parts of the African subcontinent and India, meeting and conducting observational analysis of their customs, rituals, and dreams. He scrupulously documented the prevalence of recurrent themes across disparate cultures who had never made contact with one another, but they all shared to some degree very similar, similar archetypal experiences or conceptions. 